Hello, this is David Mandel once again. Welcome to CIS 240L, Linux Installation and Configuration, being taught at Portland Community College. Um, it's Thanksgiving week this week. I'm a little late with the videos. Um, and um, But we're doing very well in this class, so I've decided to take it a little easy on Thanksgiving week. You notice that there is no lab this week. I was originally planning a lab, but looking at how we're doing, I've decided to cancel this week's lab. And uh, we'll actually push this lab to next week. And then next week's lab, we probably will not do, period. Um, however, at the end of the class, the last lab will be as planned. You need to go to an open source event sometime during the term and write a little review of the open source event you attended. Thus, you should be looking at Caligator on a regular basis. Caligator this week is shown here. It's a very, very light week this week. Um, but there are things going on on um, um, Saturday and uh, Monday. And then next, or Sunday and Monday, and then next week things pick up. Um, among the meetings next week is the, I have not posted it yet, but the Portland Linux Unix group will be meeting on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. at Portland State University. And we'll have Scott Jarman talk on autoconfig, which is a script for writing make files that will compile and install code and do it in a very distribution independent way. So if you use autoconfig, your code will compile and install on many different Linuxes. Or actually, you can make it so it will compile on many different Unixes, so you're not just limited to Linux. Um, and it's a widely used system. OK. Um, let's go back here, go to our Content tab. Search down the Content tab. As I said, we're doing week um, 9, which is chapter 10. I'll look at the instructor notes, which I've already got over here. And, um, um, and in a little bit here, we will get started with the discussion of week 10. Um, I have a couple things I probably want to discuss before starting with um, week 10. The first is that last week, I was up to supercomputing in Seattle. And if I get a chance, I might take some of my photos from week 10 and do a separate little video or PowerPoint or something just on supercomputing, because it was just a cool place to be and um, has no, um, it's not a necessary or mandatory thing for this class, but I thought you just might be interested in it. Um, the other thing is <coughs> chapter 10 talks about common systems and common administrative tasks. So I should say a little bit about what life as a system, Unix systems administrator is like. Um, there is no one life as a Unix systems administrator. Uh, the jobs vary as most jobs vary, so it's, it's hard to describe it in one term. But fundamentally, um, what a Unix systems administrator does is to look after the Unix systems, or sometimes the PC systems, um, and to do anything that's needed that is associated with those systems. Um, the exact job varies a lot depending on, in part, on whether you're at a large company or a big or a small company. At large companies, um, like when I was at the US Bureau of Land Management, we had quite a few Unix systems administrators. We had computer operators. We had a whole programming staff. We had a database programming staff. So the jobs tended to be rather specialized. The lead Unix systems administrator tended to be um, it was a technical job, but there was a huge management uh, component of it where they were managing the more junior systems administrators who were, in turn, working a lot with the computer operators. And we had people sitting there 24 hours a day, 
uh, monitoring the systems, making sure they were running at optimal performance, um, changing paper in printers, um, you name it, they, they, they did it. Um, at a small company, sometimes users do more of that themselves. The systems administrator may be in charge of both the Unix and the Windows system, although if it's a um, if it's like a ISP or a very internet oriented company, they may have so many Unix systems that the Unix person has very little to do with the Windows machines. Um, at a, s a smaller company, the Unix systems administrator's job may be primarily working with the Windows machines in the offices and stuff, and then as a sideline, he's got to take care, he or she has to take care of the Unix servers. And, um, and often, you know, that's their secondary role. Other places, such as a research-oriented um, company, like I worked at Oregon State University from time to time, they are... Um, the primary role of the Unix um, system administrator was to do pro a computer programming. And they would be a, hired as a scientific programmer who basically was writing a lot of code and doing a lot of computer programming. And then on the side, they'd take care of their oh, five, ten Unix computers as just part of their job. And sometimes that got quite involved, as an example. Some of these machines, I was in the College of Oceanography, and one of the routine things is you may have to take a machine, you may have to do an experiment in the middle of the ocean, meaning you have to take some computers, put them on a ship, try to deal with the salt water hitting them, uh, try to deal with massive vibrations caused by the ship's engines, and um, you're running them off of generators, and the generators are often pretty screwed up. Maybe the generator's frequency is only turning your clock 17 hours a day instead of 24. Um, and you've got to come up with a way to make all these systems work. And they have to work because your job depends on it. You're going to be at sea for maybe two weeks, collect a lot of data, come back and spend the next year or two analyzing that data. If you don't successfully collect that data, um, you've got no job for the next couple of years. Um, so, you know, you, you get the data. And so part of the planning process is making sure that you have a spare part, uh, uh, for, you know, you take a computer with you, you take a second computer that's identical to the first computer, so if the first one goes down, you can swap in the second one. You take enough parts to build a third computer so you can repair the second or the first one when it breaks, and, and it can be a very exciting thing. Um, and I am told that you do all of this while you're seasick, so uh, it, it, it can be challenging. Um, also can be a lot of fun. Um, so as I say, the jobs vary a lot in that um, um, in some cases the Unix systems administrator is really very much a Unix system administrator. In many, many other cases that is only part of their job. In most cases, I think, at least by the time you become a senior Unix administrator, a lot of your job is doing research into things like how to improve the system and how to um, figure out what to do, disaster planning, figure out what to do if there's a disaster and the system goes down, um, how do you how, how do t things take effect so that you can recover in a timely fashion. Um, one of my projects that um, I'm quite proud of is people came to me asking me about um, scanning maps because they had a lot of data on paper maps, mylar maps actually. They had to scan all this data to make it vector data so they could take it into their geographic information system. Uh, the tradition at that time was you scanned this by hand. You had a big tablet and people just scanned um, they'd, they'd move a cursor, kind of like a mouse, over the um, lines, 
and that would scan the data into the computers and then you could take it into CAD packages or GIS packages or what have you. Um, they had like 3,000 of these manuscripts. The lines were topography lines, so they were very, very dense. Topography of Oregon, especially like the Cascades, gets incredibly dense. And um, so I figured out, you know, that all we'd have to do is cover Western Oregon with digitizing tablets and hire a staff of 10,000 people 24 hours a day to be digitizing or, or something like that. It was totally unaffordable. Whereupon I started recommending that uh, scanning solutions. Uh, scanning solutions that could scan maps and then vectorize the data is still difficult to do. And at that time, that was in the about 1990, not quite 1990. That was in the 1980s. Um, it was incredibly difficult. And um, I found some open source software at the time, a package called LT Plus, that was being used for much smaller projects. It was open source, my personal bias, of course. Um, developed by a man by the name of John DeBritz at the U.S. Forest Service. And um, basically, I, I took that package, recommended that package to them. Uh, of course, it only ran on Unix computers. My organization was non-Unix at the time. Um, but I figured out how we could build Unix machines out of their PCs. This was pre-Linux, remember. Um, we used a version of uh, Unix called SCO to open desktop. Um, and um, I ported the software from the um, Xenix systems that it had been running on to the Unix systems. It was my first C project, actually, ever. Um, it, it, a lot, fortunately, it was relatively easy. But the mathematics and the benchmarking behind making this um, um, making this package that was meant to use on small maps work on these enormously, unbelievably dense maps was, was quite complex. Probably took me about six months. A and I wrote 30 lines of code, maybe. <laughs> but, 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 the, um, but the analysis was quite complex. And, um, um, and it was fun. And, and it ended up with messes of people, maybe 150 people using this package to capture data, and um, my company getting several contracts with the government and earning several million dollars off of the um, um, off of this package and this procedure. Um, and a lot of other people benefited as well. So it was really a cool, um, cool project. I, um, anyway, to get back to our subject, though, that is the type of thing that I, I think a lot of Unix systems administrators do. Um, um, and uh, it's fun. I, I, I always enjoy the job. One of the things I enjoy about being a Unix admin is it takes a lot of the same skills as software programming, but it um, uh, is much, much more of a people job. You have to have very much, pe you have to have people skills as well as technical skills. And I really like that combination. And um, that's why I've done a lot of Unix systems administration, and um, I really enjoy it. Bye-bye. Mm,